Hey, what's up guys? What's going on? Welcome back. This is episode number three of the Spun Today podcast, and I am your host, Tony Ortiz. I'm recording the intro to this podcast on October 23rd, 2014, and what I'm going to play after this is actually pre-recorded. It is the audiobook version of the first short story that I ever wrote which is on my website, spuntoday.com, under the short story section. The name of the, of the story is Bully. As I said in episode one, I believe, uh, of this podcast, um, I want to create audiobook versions of each of the short stories that I post up on the site, and this is my first go of it. Now, recording this, I realized how bad this first story actually is, but um, it was my first go at actually writing out a short story and my first go at uh, creating this audio, audiobook portion to it. So if you can't appreciate that, go fuck yourselves. Now, another thing that I did notice, though, um, with uh, pre-recording, like with the audiobook, uh, full disclosure here, because as you guys know, you know, I don't edit any of my podcasts or anything like that, but for the audiobooks, I will be doing editing and, um, you know, doing it for the purpose of, you know, an attempt of actually sounding, making it sound professional. And I'm also throwing in, um, like different sound effects that I feel enhance the story. And some are just like funny or corny and go well with the story, I feel. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy that also. But what I was going to say is recording this spot, this, um, or editing rather, uh, the audiobook uh, portion of it that you guys are about to listen to, I realized how fucking hard editing is. I have a newfound appreciation for editors. And I know dick about editing, but um, except from what I went through for the last couple of days trying to piece this together and, you know, space the sentences and the words in a certain way and paragraphs and enhancing the sound quality and inserting like the special effects and cutting out, you know, all the ums and mistakes and words misspoken and stuff like that. And it's a fucking pain in the ass. So my hack was off to all the editors out there. It's definitely not something I would want to do day in and day out, but, um, it was fun. And, uh, a learning experience to go through through at least on you know this minor scale now scheduling wise i just wanted to touch on and say that i set a schedule of releasing a new podcast episode every other thursday so basically meaning that every other thursday every two weeks on thursday you can look forward to a new episode of the Spun Today podcast. Uh, sometimes in between, I will be releasing a bonus episode also on Thursdays, though. Um, but generally, every other Thursday or every two weeks on Thursday. If you like the podcast, as always, rate us on iTunes, on Stitcher as well, and visit my website, spuntoday.com. Uh, visit the contact page. And click on the Amazon banner to do all of your Amazon shopping. It takes you directly to the Amazon website. It does not cost you anything extra. Uh, Amazon just kicks back a referral fee just for driving traffic towards their website. So you can do that and it would definitely help out a great deal as well. And with that said, guys, and without further ado, try and enjoy the shitty short story version or audiobook version, rather, of Bully. Bully by Tony Ortiz. Setting, 4th grade public school classroom in Queens, New York, circa 1994. Today is a very important day, said Mr. K. As you all know, we voted last Thursday to make this year's class play Cinderella, 
and today we find out who our Cinderella and Prince Charming will be. A nervous murmur sprinkled with excitement made its way around the classroom amongst the kids as Mr. K continued. Let me explain the selection process to you. Anyone can volunteer for these two roles. I will put a passage from the play up on the chalkboard. One by one, all the volunteers will come up to the front of the class and read the passage to us, the same way you would on stage. The rest of us will be making mental notes on how well you do, so that we can vote to select the best person for the role later. After all the volunteers have had a chance to showcase their acting chops, I'm going to ask them to step outside into the hallway while the rest of us quietly vote. The person with the most votes will win the starring role. And when you become big stars in Hollywood, don't forget who discovered you. Ha! 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 He laughed with that deep breath pausing laugh of his. I sat nervously at my hard wooden desk in the middle right side of the room, looking around at all of the shy, awkward, soon-to-be volunteer faces and all of the seemingly more confident, there's no way in hell I'm going up there faces. Speak amongst yourselves and decide if you will be auditioning for the rest of us today while I write the passages for both Cinderella and our prince on the chalkboard. Remember that all of us will play a part in the play on or off stage. Should I audition for the starring role? I thought to myself. It is the first step to being discovered and on my way to Hollywood. Then I can be in a movie, or maybe even the Power Rangers. Or should I be the stagehand guy that opens and closes the curtains on the stage with those long, thick ropes that look like the ones we climb in gym class? That could be fun too, I guess. Hey, Anthony, the most angelic voice in the whole wide world whispered. Are you going to audition to be the prince? I will if you audition for Cinderella, I told Stephanie, as I patted myself on the back in my mind for such a smooth comeback. Yeah, right, she says. I'm too much of a scaredy cat for that. I wouldn't be able to speak in front of the whole fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. Oh man, I hadn't even thought of that. I'm worried about speaking in front of the class. Imagine the actual play in six weeks. Take two more minutes to make your decisions, kids, said Mr. K. Who is the board monitor this week, by the way? I am, Mr. K, said Sue Ellen. Please make sure you clap the erasers outside the window at the end of the day. They're filthy. Yes, Mr. K, as she rolled her eyes. Why she signed up to be the board monitor beats me. She hates it and is always complaining about the dusty chalk making her cough. I like being board monitor and trying to make big clouds of chalk when I clap the erasers together. Two weeks ago, I clapped them so fast that even Leo was impressed and didn't try to take my cookies at lunch that day. Okay, my lovely Cinderella's, ladies first, stand up at your desks if you'd like to audition. All of us eagerly scanned the room, waiting for the brave souls to stand up. One by one, they got up. Both of the twins, Vickiana and Ileana, even did. Then Tiffany, Angela, Pamela, and Renee got up too. Six girls in all. Okay, Cinderella's, stand up in the back of the room, and I'll call you up one by one to the front. Read the paragraph for us, and then return to your seats. Angela, we'll start with you. She walked up to the front of the classroom, <laughs> nervously giggling. Everyone likes Angela. She's sweet, and she's Steph's best friend. So that means she'll be like my sister-in-law or something one day. Angela twirled her braided hair around as she read the paragraph on the board and giggled. The class would laugh with her every time. She finished. We all clapped and smiled. And with a huge look of relief on her face, she went back to her desk and started talking with Steph right in front of me. You're so cool, Angie, Stephanie told her. I wish I could do that. Thanks, responded Angela. As she turned around to me and said, Aunt, you should go up there. You'll do great. I nervously nodded my head and smiled, completely tuning out Tiffany's read. Thank you, Tiffany, said Mr. K. You can go back to your seat now. It's your turn, Pamela. Pam is cute and has really nice blonde hair. And last year in third grade, 
She was Ariel from The Little Mermaid in Miss Soto's class. She was awesome and knows what she's doing. But my heart belongs to Stephanie and always will. Right then it dawned on me. The plan of all plans. If I got the part, Steph would have to love me back. Who doesn't love a prince? That's my motivation. I have to win her over somehow. Even if I don't get it, she'll think I'm just as cool as Angela. And that's one step closer to making her my girlfriend. The roaring clap in the room snapped me out of my plotting mind. Great job, Pamela, said Mr. K. Very impressive. Please take your seat now. After the remaining girls went up, Mr. K asked them all to step out into the hallway as he whispered to us. Okay, my little Siskel and Eberts. By a show of hands, how many of you want Angela to be our Cinderella? He counted the votes and tallied them up next to where he had written all of the volunteers' names. We all knew Pamela was going to win, but my loyalty vote, together with Steph's, went to Angie. Ralphie, please let the girls know that they can come in now, said Mr. K. Ralphie's seat was right by the door, so he reached over and opened the door. Mr. K said to come back in, he told the girls, and they did. As they walked in, Mr. K says, Everyone give a round of applause for our Cinderella, Pamela. As she smiled with an excited look on her face, good for her, I thought. She definitely deserved it. Okay, everyone, back to their seats. Quiet down. Now, time for our leading man. Which of you brave young men will be auditioning for the role? My heart is racing like a marching band snare drum solo. Leo gets up. Ralphie. Mike. Joey. Curtis. Charlie even got up. And then Steven did too. Steph turns around to me and gives me a pouty sad face. And I dart it up like a -a whack-a-mole in a town fair. Okay, guys. To the back of the room you go. Curtis, we'll start with you. Curtis went up and could have given an Oscar-worthy performance for all I know. Drowning waves of nervousness overwhelmed my consciousness. What was I thinking? Last year I had a one-liner in a class play as Peddler Number 2 in a Pinocchio parody and nearly shit myself. Now I'm auditioning for the starring role in my sophomore performance? Talk about being overzealous. She better love me after doing this, I swear. Not some love me today, knew me tomorrow kind of love. I mean, love, love. Love me like Topanga loves Corey. Or how Kelly loved Zach before Jeff came along, kind of love. Okay, who wants to go next? Mr. K asked, as Leo nudged me forward in the line. A brave volunteer, says Mr. K. Come on up, Anthony. I look back at Leo with a look that must have been a fusion of disdain mixed with a look of a deer caught in the headlights. Stupid jerk. I murmured as I walked away from him and toward the green chalkboard. He smirked at me with that maniacal, devilish smile of his that only accentuated his horn-like eyebrows. I look at Steph as I walk by her desk, and she points at something that she wrote on her desk. It was a heart that she drew with our initials in it. A plus S, it said. And it wasn't written in pencil. It was not pen. She'd have to spit on it to wipe it off. After that... I had the confidence to take a roll away from Macaulay Culkin. Read the paragraph off of the board and project your voice toward the audience as if you were on stage. Ready? Action, said Mr. K. I cleared my throat and gave it a whirl. How foolish of me to think that I can throw a grand ball for all of the fairest eligible ladies in the town to attend and expect to find my true love in just one night. What was I thinking? I've been somber and alone for far too long, causing me to resolve to these drastic measures. Wait, there is my princess. True love has finally answered my prayers. She is as beautiful as an April morning. Come, let's dance. There's my debut of some pretty impressive acting chops, if I do say so myself. The class clapped and everything. They may have clapped for everyone else, but I was too nervous to remember. I even caught Leo turn to Joey and say something to the effect of, that was good. I walked back to my seat with my head held high and with extra pep in my step. Angie turned to me and said, you're so gonna win. 
Steph nodded in agreement as she blushed. I smiled back at them in an I know I'm awesome way and said, nah, we'll see what happens. Leo tried pushing Joey up next like he did to me so that he would go last. But Mr. K actually noticed this time. Leo, since you're so kind to let people go before you, how about we return the favor and let you go first? Come up, he said sternly. Then Leo walked by and kicked my chair on his way up to the front of the room. Hard enough to make me lose my balance while sitting and not expecting that jolt, but soft enough to act like it was an accident. What an evil douche. Leo reads his lines with a lackluster, I'm too cool for school attitude. Looking at the floor the whole time, sucking his teeth, messing up and repeating his lines. Then went to his desk saying, that was stupid. I didn't feel like doing it good. Joey went up after and gave a similarly forgetful performance. And off we went to stand outside in the hall as the class voted. We're all slightly on edge anticipating the results of the votes being cast. Leo turns to address us all and surprisingly says, Guys, no matter what, none of us can get mad. We're all friends and it don't matter who won. We all nodded our heads and agreed. Yeah, said Mike. We all gave it our best shots. This was great. As I stood there thinking to myself, I know I did great. Like that feeling you have when you ace an exam before you actually receive the results. I think Mike did really well. And he's Pamela's boyfriend, so he might get a lot of votes just based on that. He's cool too, so I'm okay with that. But I know for a fact that I smoked Leo and Joey. Curtis I was too nervous to pay attention to. And the other guys did so-so. Me and Mike have to be the top choices. So Leo, the class bully, being okay with all that was perfect. The door opens with Mr. K at the other end of it. Come in, my little princes. All of our names and votes were on the chalkboard. And I had to do a double take as the class clapped to welcome us back in. Curtis, two. Steven, three. Charlie, three. Mike, eight. Ralphie, one. Anthony, 14, Leo, two, Joey, one. It was a landslide. Whoa, I really did win. Give it up for our Prince Charming, everybody, said Mr. K, as he had us take our seats again. That's so cool. Scary, but good scary. We all took our seats, and Mr. K gave an overview of how many practices we're going to have in the classroom and on which days we would get the auditorium to actually practice on the big stage. See, I told you so, Angie said. Steph followed that with, I knew you would do it for me. I winked at her and scanned my eyes around the room. Stephen gave me a nod and a smile. Mike gave me the thumbs up. Pamela smiled and looked eager to begin going over our lines. I then make it around to Joey and Leo. Joey's disinterested as usual sloppily folding up a piece of loose leaf into a paper airplane. Leo is looking at me like a rabid pit bull who's having its meal taken away from it. Nostrils flaring, horned eyebrows pointing upwards like two little pyramids, snarling and pounding his right fist into the palm of his left hand like a major league baseball catcher who's anticipating the final pitch in a no-hitter. I turn around straight at my desk, acting as if I hadn't seen what I had just seen like an ostrich sticking its head in the sand. I found solace in sitting as still as if I was avoiding to be seen by a Tyrannosaurus Rex while in plain sight. Partly surprised at the hypocrisy of this kid, and the other part of me feeling as if I was completely in the know all along. While sitting there and perfecting my statue pose, I spent the next two subjects in class before lunch, talking myself into the possibility that he was joking around and I had just turned around a half second before he started smiling and did the I'm just messing with you gesture. Then I see the first one fly by the side of my head in a forward trajectory past me and between the two girls headed towards the windows and over the table of plants that we planted in styrofoam cups last Wednesday. Pam and Steph both turn around and face me at the exact same time that I'm thinking, what the fuck was that? And begin turning my head back. Wham! Spitball number two hits me and sticks. It sticks to my cheek, right by my mouth. 
Everyone that witnessed this, including the girls, burst out into a laugh as I squirmed in a shocked and disgusted, frantic way to slap it off of my face. Yuck. That almost went in my mouth, stupid, I told Leo. I don't even know if anyone heard that over all the laughter. Hey, hey, settle down back there. This isn't recess. Who wants detention? Who wants detention? And when Mr. K actually raises his voice like that, we all listen. Even Leo's bully ass. Right before lunch, about eight minutes before to be exact, I strategically raised my hand and asked, Can I go to the bathroom? My stomach really hurts. Can you hold it? He responded. No, I said. I really can't. Okay, but if we're not here when you return, meet us in the cafeteria. It's almost lunchtime, he said. I nodded in agreement, having not the energy or will to utter an unnecessary word. I felt weak in the knees as I walked out of the room. I waited till lunch was more than half over, and I walked to the cafeteria. Mr. K asked me where I'd been, and that I can still go grab lunch. But I told him my stomach was hurting too much, and I wasn't hungry. I sat there with my head halfway down, on the opposite side of the table from Leo, and closer to Mr. K. Maybe he had forgotten he wanted to kill me, I thought to myself. Then Mr. K walked away to go speak with Miss Maloney, a fifth grade teacher. From the corner of my right eye, I see Leo get up and start towards me. What's wrong with you? He asked. I'm sick, I responded. I think I have the flu. Could it be that he was joking all along and I've just been overreacting? Did he genuinely care about my well-being? I turned my head towards him because I was avoiding eye contact at first and noticed him looking in the direction of Mr. K, who was still distracted with his conversation and with Miss Maloney flirting with him. I'm still going to fuck you up, he said, as he pushed my head down and bounced my forehead off the cold white surface of the fold-away lunch table. I shoved his arm away in a pathetic attempt to fight back as he walked away and laughed. Mr. K walked back to escort us outside for the 15 minutes of after-lunch recess they give us so that we can burn off some of the sugar we've ingested at lunch and tire ourselves out enough to be tolerable for the next three hours of class. Hey, Ant. You want to play kickball with us outside? Adam asked me. Nah, I don't want to go outside, I responded. Come on, you love kickball, and you're one of the best at it. Don't worry about Leo, he's not playing. I think he's playing asses up on the handball court with Joey and the fifth graders or something, rebutted Adam. Was everyone already aware of my impending doom? No, you guys go ahead. I'm going to stay in, I told Adam. He shrugged his shoulders and left with the burgundy kickball under his right arm and the half-squeezed apple juice box in his left. Some of the nerd kids always stayed inside at recess to play checkers and battleship and some to start their homework. Ugh, is this what is going to happen to me? Is this my future? The next three torturous hours sitting in class were a blur. The bell was about to ring for a dismissal in like five minutes and I was out of excuses, plans, or ideas. I looked at Leo with one last piece of hope that he would admit to have just been messing with me all afternoon. And he gave me the finger. Yeah, that finger. Let's start lining up now, in size order, guys and gals, said Mr. K, so that we can walk out double file as soon as the first bell rings. Great. He's speeding up the inevitable, I thought to myself. The multi-tonal bell rings. Okay, let's go, kids. Walk out to the front of Staircase B and wait for me to shut off all the lights, said Mr. K. I stood there with a look on my face that must have been oozing worry. Then it dawned on me. My older brother was picking me up, as he always did after he got out from high school. I was saved. He can put an end to this, or at least scare Leo away. He's in the ninth grade. He's usually outside by the time I walk out to the street, too. There was a class in front of us, so we were lined up in the staircase, waiting for the second bell followed by the announcement by Mr. Leparo, the dean, of opening up the doors. Leo was above me in the staircase and leaned over Mike's shoulder and says, I'm gonna fuck you up. No, you're not. My brother's outside, I responded confidently. I'll fuck his fat ass up too, Leo responded. No, you can't, stupid asshole. Shut up. He's bigger than you, I responded defiantly. Shh. Keep it down and face forward, said Mr. K. Could he really beat me and my brother both up? I thought to myself as the worry began to sink in again. Stephanie was right across from me in the girls' line and turned to me and asked, Are you really going to fight Leo?
I quickly gave a knee-jerk reaction response. Hell no. With an, of course not, look on my face. I actually thought for some reason that she would respect me for taking the admirable high road and not succumbing to Leo's bullying taunts and tactics. The love of my life and future mother of my children, as I hoped it to be one day, leaned back over to me and with an angelic whisper said, You're a pussy, and turned away from me in disgust. At that moment, I felt as if the whole world came crashing down around me. Everything became dark. I felt as if my heart had leaped up into my throat and was making its way out of my body through my mouth because it didn't even want to be affiliated with me any longer. At that moment, Leo kicking my ass didn't seem like such a bad idea anymore. Maybe he'd knock me unconscious and I'd get amnesia and forget any of this ever happened. Okay, kids, see you tomorrow, Mr. K said. After Mr. Leparo's okay to dismiss us, he pushed open the brown painted metal doors. Get home safe. I walk out and scan the sea of parents, babysitters, and older siblings waiting there to make their pickups. Searching for my brother, that's nowhere to be seen. Where the fuck is he? Seriously? Today, out of all days, he's not here on time? I get yanked by the top loop of my plastic blue and red Power Rangers backpack and drop to the floor like a leaf in the fall. It was Leo. I quickly looked around and not many people noticed. The ones that did thought that we were just horsing around and didn't make much of it. Mike and Adam and even Joey came up behind Leo and held him back. As I stood up and Leo charged forward with the strength of a raging bull. They could barely hold him back. Run, go, Adam said. Just get out of here, said Mike. Let me go, I'm going to kill him, Leo exclaimed. I turned around and ran away toward the rear of the school, where the backyard was, frantically dodging people in my way and simultaneously looking for my brother. I get to the backyard and look back to see the guys holding him back and waving me off at the same time, yelling but I couldn't make out what they were saying. I dart across the yard to the other side of the school. I've never run so fast. I re-entered the school on the other side. I was safe for now. But now I had no way of getting in touch with my brother, so it was like I was trapped inside. After the longest 10 minutes of my life, I walked over to the other side of the school from the inside, looking over my shoulder with every step. I cracked open the brown metal door and stuck my head out. There was barely a handful of people left, just a couple parent friends catching up before going their separate ways. In the distance, I see my brother making his way up to my school. I step out and look around one more time to make sure the ghost was clear and I run towards him with tears in my eyes, but relieved. The hell's wrong with you? He asked. Leo wants to beat me up, I shamefully responded. What? Why? Where is he? He asked. I don't know. Let's go home, I said insistently. No, he responded sternly. Let's go find him. I think I saw his brother Alvin in school today. He probably came to pick him up. I'll go talk to him. Like a dog with his tail between his legs, I walked half a step behind my brother. There they go over there, standing by the crossing guard, my brother said as he spotted them half a block away. We approached them and I felt as if we were about to negotiate some type of gang war truce over turf or something. Yo, what's up? My brother said to Leo's brother. Something happened with these two and he tells me Leo wants to fight him and I want to squash that and make sure that we're cool here. Alvin turns to Leo and says, that true? Why you want to fight this kid? Leo, half looking up and half looking at the floor, while he lightly kicked a few pebbles on the ground, says, He took my part in the play. Nuh-uh, I responded quickly. I won that part fair and square. Alvin smirked and told Leo, Come on, man. You can't be bullying kids, acting like a tough guy. You do that shit when you get to junior high. Not now. Don't be doing stuff like that. How screwed up is this family? Put off your bullying till you're older? Like it's some sort of rite of passage? What kind of advice is that? Mental note to self? Don't go to the same junior high as this lunatic. So are we good here? My brother asked them with a no-nonsense tone in his voice. Yeah, we're good, Alvin responded and gave my brother a pound. Shake his hand and say sorry, he instructed Leo as he pointed to me, and he did. He slapped me five and said, see you tomorrow, and they walked away. It was finally over. My brother had successfully negotiated my freedom. You're the best, I told him. Thank you as I happily walked beside him on our way home. When we get home, you have to clean my white sneakers with the soap and toothbrush, he told me. Okay, no problem, I said willingly. 
Small price to pay for saving my life, I thought. And clean my room for the next month, too. If you don't, I'll tell Leo to beat you up. FML. And scene. There you have it, guys. I hope it wasn't too grueling to listen to. Would you like to receive a short email from me once a week? You know that feeling you have on a Monday at work when you have absolutely nothing to look forward to except for lunch? Have no fear. The Midday Monday Boost letter is here. In this short weekly newsletter, you will receive five things. One is a photograph of the week from a photographer. A podcast of the week. I listen to tons of podcasts, dozens and dozens of podcasts, hundreds of episodes. And I cherry pick the best ones and I share them with you here. You'll also receive a video of the week, which could be anything from a rap battle to a TED talk. You receive a quote of the week, something to let marinate in your mind. And a word of the week so that you and I can both step up our vocab. So if any of that sounds of interest to you, check it out. Check out the subscribe page at spuntrade.com forward slash subscribe. Drop in your email address and you'll receive the very next one. For any writers or creatives out there, I have a questionnaire. It's a five question questionnaire that anyone is free to fill out. It's located at spuntray.com forward slash questionnaire. And what it is, is five open-ended questions related to your craft. It's things like what inspires you to write or create whenever you don't feel the inspiration to do so. What are your favorite apps or tools or tricks to trick yourself into getting into the mind state of actually creating? What inspires you, et cetera, et cetera, stuff like that. And what I do with your responses is share them on a future episode of the podcast. Now, you can choose to remain anonymous if you choose to. You have that option right there when you fill out the questionnaire. And if you do not choose to remain anonymous, I give you a shout out on the podcast and promote for free whatever it is that you have going on. So I appreciate you in advance for sharing that with me, as well as the rest of the listeners of the Sponsored Podcast, which would stand to gain from you filling out the questionnaire. Now, you can help support the podcast in a myriad of ways, one way which does not cost you anything and is most popular within the podcasting community is by shopping on Amazon using my affiliate links banner. So the way that works is you go to sponsored.com forward slash affiliate links or just click on the affiliate links tab at the top center of the page and there you will see a banner for Amazon. You literally just click on that and it takes you to Amazon's website where you do your shopping like you normally do. It does not cost you anything extra, but Amazon will give me a kickback just for driving traffic to their website. So that would be a big help. It literally costs you nothing extra financially, just costs you a couple of extra clicks of your mouse before you do your Amazon shopping. The iTunes banner that's on that same page works the same way. So if you're purchasing music or movies or whatever it is on iTunes, feel free to go through my affiliate link portal there as well. If you want to make a one-time uh, PayPal donation, feel free to do so. There's a PayPal donation button on there as well. Within that same tab, you'll also find a link to the Spun Today Viral Style store. Now, the Viral Style store is a store where you can get Spun Today merch, whether it's a coffee mug or a t-shirt that I personally designed. And spoiler alert, I'm no... I'm no Ralph Lauren or, you know, whoever designs Gucci stuff, (laughs) but I did create the design of those shirts myself. I have a couple t-shirts on there. One that says, for example, right need every day, which is a playoff of Snoop, Dre, and Nate Dogg's smoke weed every day. So it's right need every day with like a puff cloud of smoke behind it. I have a podcast versus everybody t-shirt and uh, just stuff like that. So check it out. The link to the viral style store is also there. You can also help support the podcast on a reoccurring basis if you become a Patreon supporter. Now, Patreon is pretty cool. And it there's a little um, video explanation of what it is and how it works. But I'll try to do my best to summarize it here. Basically, you sign on to Patreon, which is a free service, free account. 
and you can support not just myself but any other uh, podcasters or creatives that also have Patreon pages. And you can choose to, for example, donate a dollar to them on a per episode basis. So the Sponsor Day podcast has two uh, episodes a month. So if you donate a dollar to it, it'll be two dollars a month, basically. And you set it up and it just happens automatically on a reoccurring basis. There are zero fees. You can cancel at any time. No hassle. No bullshit. And it's uh, it's a cool way to help support and is much appreciated. And also, it's not just like a, for example, uh, a PayPal donation, which is just that. But through Patreon, it allows the creator, in this case being myself, to set up a reward system, if you will. So if you donate a dollar per episode, you are considered a tier one supporter. If you donate three dollars per episode, you are a second tier supporter, et cetera, et cetera. And it goes up to four tiers. And each tier gets different things. Like uh, tier one gets a free sponsored bookmark and a shout out on the podcast. Tier three gets uh, gets those two things from tier one as well as a free writing piece that's not posted on, on my website or available to anyone else, et cetera, et cetera. So check that out if you will. And uh, visit my Patreon page at Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Spun Today. Another great, amazing way to help support the podcast is to rate and review it. This costs you absolutely nothing. Whether you listen on iTunes, on Stitcher, on TuneIn, on iHeartRadio, on Pocket Casts, on Overcast, on Player FM, on Google Play, on YouTube, on Tumblr, or if you listen on Podbay, or any other of your favorite podcast apps. Please rate and review the episode. It really is the number one way to help the show gain traction, gain exposure. You know, you could also share with friends or family and tell them, you know, check out what this idiot is saying. Some of it is actually pretty good. Or it all fucking sucks and you should listen and laugh. But as long as you're listening, (laughs) it would be much appreciated. So rate and review the podcast wherever it is that you listen. Follow me on Twitter or on Instagram at Spun Today. Like the Facebook fan page at facebook.com forward slash Spun Today. Subscribe to my YouTube page as well. All podcast episodes are available on YouTube as well as clipped versions. For example, with the Random Rant episodes, you know, I speak about a bunch of different topics instead of having the full episode alone, which is also available on YouTube. But you also have snippets of the different topics broken up into more digestible chunks. So check that out. You can also support by checking out my book, Make Way For You, Tips For Getting Out Of Your Own Way. It's a quick short read if you're looking for some inspiration and motivation. And you can find out more about it at spuntray.com forward slash books. There you'll find a video of me telling you all how the book came to fruition, as well as a couple of audio excerpts. If you're interested, you can purchase it wherever books are sold, Kindle, iBooks, Kobo, in ebook or paperback format, which you can find on Amazon. Also, for being a Spun Today listener, I can also send you a free copy right there on that same landing page at sponsor.com forward slash books. Drop in your email address at the bottom of the page, and I'll shoot you over a copy in the format of your choice. And that's all I got, folks. Thanks again for checking out this episode. And as always, substitute the mysticism with hard work and start taking steps in the general direction of your dreams. Thanks for listening.